Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, man. Hey, man, I got it live today, man. I got some. I got kings in here today, man. Say, man, I got my boy LD300. He helping me co-host right now, man. Hey, something different. Something hey, new we're going to do on this side of the mic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I got my boy Derwin Lamb, man. Yes, sir. Hey, man. welcome to Boss Talk 101, man. man. Thank you so much for allowing me to come up here, man. Man, man. I, I couldn't do it without you, to be honest yeah. with you. You are, you are. I believe, you know, you one of the patriarchs that when it come down to helping the community. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm committed to, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what? You you from Stop Six? Risen, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, how was it over there? Because I done had a few Stop Six people on here, and uh, yeah. it get, I done heard some stories. I don't. I just passed right on by. Yeah. I go on the weather for the mineral 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 wells or something. I don't even. Yeah. I don't even stop. Ain't yeah. Y'all got too much going on. <laughs> hey man, listen. I learned a long time ago to stay out the way. A long time ago. So, so just give us some insight on who you are, man, and um, you know, just give us a background on you know, just coming up. How was it coming up in uh, Stop Six, young uh, kid? I lived in um, other places, like originally from Fort Worth. My family's uh, all my family's from the north side of Fort Worth. You know, man. Uh, oh, you from the north? Well, most of my family is, so I would say north and east, but I was raised on the east, and I live okay. with my auntie, my mom and them. We, we, north side, we, shout out my homie J.J. Barry. He yeah. gonna see this here, you know, faux trade. Yeah. I feel like, <laughs> I feel side. like I'm more, I feel like I'm just of a, a north side dude as I am an east side dude, man. Okay. As a family, yeah. my dad, my mom, and all of them grew up over there, but my criminality things and stuff that I was doing when I was young was, you know, on the east side, so. Yeah. Yeah. Without criminating myself. Well, yeah. we, we don't want we're not we're not those other shows, brother. Yeah, yeah. We're not trying to get you in no cross. But uh, <laughs> but we do want to talk about just coming up like when you first uh uh came up and started, you know, are you from a single parent home or what? Nah, nah. Uh, Mom and dad I mean, still together? It was uh it was until my uh awesome stepdad came in, but I didn't bring my real dad till I was sixteen. But um we was at first it was just me and my mom and my little sister. And then my stepdad came in years later. So great dude, man. Um, you know, love him, love him to death. My mom, great, great people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. you know, when you when you think about uh, that area over there, uh, you guys got a y'all got a, a great uh, lineup when it comes to different leaders. I think about in that area for some yeah. reason. It's it's hardcore, but what don't kill you make you stronger, right? right. Right. So, so I mean, you know, being on whichever side you on, when you start hollering stop six, it gets this type of respect. Yeah. Some kind of, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, when you first came up, I mean, you know, I know you don't want to get into too much, but kind of, kind of, what, what, what made you, you know, kind of go a little bit off, off track? Man, honestly, if I'm being real with you, yeah. Um, what happened to me was a lot. What happened to a lot of black kids that won't black young men that won't admit this, that a lot of us was looking for a way to fit in. And um, a lot of us were looking away a way to fit in, uh, maybe, and to survive too, you know. The world is real um, ugly and nasty, and I realized that as a young man, that my thing was to affiliate myself with somebody where it was almost like, I felt like I could be a part of a group, a part. Of, it's like sports, anything, you wanna be a part of something. And that's what it was for me, because it was my cousin who really that, made me like wanted to be involved with the affiliations because I looked up to him, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I looked up to him, so I wanted to kind of do what he was doing. So it was kind of like, that's kind of where I start kind of like following him and the, and the group and the clicks and stuff like that and not knowing what I was really getting myself into, you know what I mean? It was more like me like a, fat, a fade or a fad thing to me, not realize what I was really getting myself into until it started getting like that. Yeah, and still, you have to get out that get out that porch and get into that water. Things start changing and stuff like that. So, my perspective was different. I always felt like I was different than than all the guys anyway, because I feel like that wasn't really my calling. That wasn't really what I was supposed to be doing. You know, what I'm saying I was just doing something to be doing it, and then it got a little out of control, out of hand. You know what I mean? And my spirit wasn't supposed to be like that. It was me that, you know, my curiosity and me not having really nothing else to do and me wanting to be like that. And it was like, man, 
I'm, I'm, I'm like that, so I'm, I'm going to try to do that. A lot of people won't admit this, but a lot of boys, a lot of men are like that. They're not really like that till you got to get like that. What I, what I took from a lot of those guys, man, was um, personally for me was like, besides like, it's way deeper than affiliation and gang culture to mm -hmm. me. To me, it was like, these dudes was like, a lot of my cousins, my friends and family, they were like real like family and brothers. Like I never, I never had no issues. And even on the other side, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have no issues with people that were Crips. I didn't have pe issues with people that were Bloods. I just saw it like as dudes were like coming together as brothers and families. And I still see that to this day. To this day. When I yes, was over thanks. there yesterday talking to the little bro and talking to all the guys, it's like, man, you know, it was a, it's a genuine family, a genuine love. I'm not even thinking about gang banging. Yeah. None of that is not even in my in my mind or nothing like it's like man these dudes are like real life friends and real life brothers and they not haters and they not you know they support me in anything i do as far as like the community the martial arts and stuff like that they come to my events and it's real 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 love so that's what i that's what i took from it i mean yeah. a lot of people take so the, you with martial arts you do martial. oh yeah how was you how was you trained in that yeah so my mom my mom was actually um, in karate at a young age and I used to go to her karate class with her in Fort Worth you know what I'm saying and so and then you know she was training with one of the elite guys in Fort Worth at the time mm -hmm. and later on you know when my my dad came into play he was also a martial artist that's actually how my mom and my dad yeah, or stepdad step met yeah. and my biological father was in the martial arts so my families were, were so you known in the hood as this. Yeah, you know that's what everybody know me as, in, as a martial arts fighter. I mean, because I, you know, um, you know, I started to grab you when I shook your hand. I didn't take it firm, but <laughs> I, I say, let me, I, nigga, talking martial arts. Me, you know, yeah. but I let you make it. You, know <laughs> you been to prison? Uh, a long time ago, nineteen ninety five, ninety six. Yeah, so you went up in there. You already was on your. Martial arts? Uh, yeah, I knew. So I started training. Like I started doing martial arts when I was about seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what prison I, did you go to? No, I was in. Uh, I was in Colorado at the time. I was Why in, you went to prison in Colorado? I was in Colorado. So but, Colorado Springs. What the hell are you doing in Colorado? Yeah, my mom, breaking the laws, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just it, it, if you if you understood, it wasn't even nothing like that. It was me being young and misunderstanding the conditions of of my probation and okay. not knowing and me violating it because I was young and being dumb not knowing the game it was really something small you know I was Definitely. on on a probation for an assault and harassment and I didn't end up going I stopped going my classes and stopped doing my anger management doing all that stuff then I end up uh, going to you know catching a robbery case and a pistol charge and all that stuff so I got this I end up getting a um uh, what you call it? Um, what's what's um, I brain freeze the word when a uh, violation, mm, okay. and that's that's what happened, you know. Yeah, so it yeah. went like, you know, when like I went and killed somebody or yeah. did all this, sold all this big old dope. It was just a, just a young knucklehead, technically knucklehead, yeah. not really, you know, doing what I was supposed to be doing. You had to put it. Did you you had to drop one of them cats in there with the with the Man. bang bang boom. I got. You know, that's the story I, I got, we want to hear. Right I got. There. Yeah, I got one. I got one fight in jail, man. One fight. That you know it. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, one fight. And you know, believe it or not, when you when you come from a background like martial arts and stuff like that, in a street fight, I'm not even really thinking about that stuff. I'm I'm going for what's going first. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I actually fought in a ring. I fought a couple of pro boxing fights. I fought MMA fights. I won a world title in kickboxing. 2008. Wow. I was International Kickboxing That's Federation something to World be proud Champion. Of, man. Yeah, so yeah. so something to be leery of yeah. too. And I've <laughs> been I've he been doing do all that. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah I'm gonna laugh a little more at his jokes. It, it teaches us it teaches us uh really it taught us it teaches you discipline and control. Mm. Let me tell you something. I knew that I was different than a lot of people that I used to hang around with. I knew that cuz I knew my spirit was different. I knew I didn't have no business doing some of the things I've been doing. So that's why my transition to like moving away from hanging out with the street dudes was real smooth and easy because I was intelligent enough to watch and wise enough to see 
what was going on. Watching my oh yeah, we finna crash. This yeah. ain't we right. in, we in some dead end and we yeah. and we ain't enjoying the ride. Yeah. We headed to the wild. Yeah. It was never a, a, like a a badge of well. At, at some point when I was young, trying to fit in and trying to prove myself and let everybody know, hey man, I'm I'm, I'm repping y'all. It was it was like that. But once nah, I you did right. This some illogical shit. Yeah, this one, shit yeah. ain't for no nah, figuring out. No, nah, once I realized <laughs> this was going to lead to a a different kind of tragic place, like whether it was death or jail for the rest of my life. I was like, man, I ain't really with this. I ain't really, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to do that. So nah, man, uh, God put a different kind of spirit in me than to be that kind of person. So I can't just, I'm not going to rep this thing and say I was the, I was the hardest one, but I was, I'm down. I was down and I'm down as a man regardless. So, um, but when it comes to like being hardcore and, 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 and trying to represent that life to the way you die, that's just not who I am, who I, who I, who I was supposed to be. So Smart I was see. able to smooth, move around quick. I just use what I got now and the people that show me love and that respect me from all neighborhoods. We're not, we, you know, I'm Fort Worth, anywhere, north side, south side, west side, all places, uh, people show me love. So I use that to bring people together in, in all communities, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm not, I don't like being labeled to one place and one thing because I'm, I feel like I represent all communities, you know what I'm saying? And I'm friends with some of the biggest bosses, the biggest dogs from the south side to the north side, to the east side, to the west side. I'm connected with all the top dogs, you know. They so all what is, what, what's your overall goal that you're trying to get accomplished with like what you're doing with the kids and, and whatnot? Yeah. So, so what's the goal? Just like you said a key word earlier, so people don't crash out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, like, although mom and them did the best they could, they, you know, when a generation is different, they, they can't teach you or tell you certain things that, that, you know, that they don't know. So you're really being raised by the world, by the people, your peers, you know, the people that you're in front of. So my thing is, is trying to tell these kids the things that wasn't told to me and that I had to learn on my own by taking that transition and walking life saying, you know, man, uh, I, had, I was a crash dummy. Yeah. So just making mistakes, trial and error and, and, and just trying to figure it out. So when my thing is when I do these programs with these schools and these kids is teaching them, hey, this is what you don't have to do. You don't have to be like this. It ain't cool to, to be a gang member. It ain't cool to be a street dude. It ain't cool to kill somebody. It ain't cool to go to prison. It ain't cool to rob. Regardless of what TV, music, whatever whatever you think you see you think is right. Because I was at. I was, in, I was influenced by what I saw on TV Colors, the, the you know the movie Colors. I was influenced by all that stuff. So as a young man, in my mind, I didn't realize I was already transitioning my brain to try to be something I wasn't supposed to be. And so now I want to tell people that with these kids that it's okay to be who you're supposed to be, or who God created you to be. That's the number one thing is that you ain't got to crash out. You ain't got to. Ain't nothing cool about. It. To me, what's cool is having a good bank account. You know, understanding like. Uh, you know, love, life, God, spirituality, and um, having good credit and having a house, having a car, having a good but, woman, having but, kids. But you, know you can defend yourself with also being able to defend yourself if necessary, yeah, so, when necessary. So with, with martial arts, this is the thing. If you learn martial arts, I grew up confident and not learning how to be a bully or not doing that because I knew how to fight. Mm -hmm. I knew how to do that, so I didn't have a mentality of wanting to test people or wanting to mess with people and wanting to do stuff like that because it gave me a confidence and a spirit that I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that unless I have to do that. I was in situations like, I mean, I don't know, you're familiar with Fort Worth. Like, back mm -hmm. in the day, there was a club we used to go to called Club Midpoint back in the mm -hmm. day, and it was like, really like a war zone. It was yeah. we fighting all the time. You know, I never went there with the expect expectation to fight, but it happened. But... It's not really what I wanted to do. So my thing is, if I'm not trying to fight in a ring or a cage, I'm not trying to do that. So what I teach the young guys, most of the guys in my gym that are the fighters, I've been owning the gym for ten years now. Damn. Oh yeah, I'm a martial, a full martial arts gym. I'm the only, I'm the only black owned uh, mixed martial arts gyms in this state of Texas. You know, beautiful black owned. You know, what I'm beautiful. And I've been coaching for 20 years. I've been involved in martial arts off and on for 37 years. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, fifth degree black belt in karate and 
been doing Taekwondo, 30 degree black belt in Taekwondo. I've been doing Jiu Jitsu and grappling and wrestling for about 25 years. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So, been doing Muay Thai um, and MMA, the whole thing for a long time. So, wrestling, the whole thing. So, that's, I use the platform of mixed martial arts to bring young men in to try to change, challenge their mind while they thinking they're coming in to learn fighting. I'm teaching them fighting because that's what they want to learn. But I'm, all, but what I'm really doing is getting inside here. What's the age bracket you you really dealing with? So mainly, for the most part, mainly um, we take them as young as five. But my main group is the ages between 14 and 30 years old. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, I like that because when you think about 14 to 30, or just it's just those ages that you 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 you're keeping a lot of people focused on something other right. than. Right. I got to I got to hear what I, I just said. I hear you. Other than. Yeah. You know, because there's but a I, lot I'm I can get to, into I, at 14 to 30, bro. For sure, but I want to know. Like is they is do they re- cuz I'm gonna tell you something that I noticed. I noticed that people ain't got that fight in them no more. Like yeah. they not really one, you know, you get hit in the, oh, you do, you know. Yeah. Are you seeing, like, you seeing that fight? Like, people are fighting? Like, yeah. they want that, get, they want that contact, yeah. that physicality? It's a spirit. Like, everybody that come in my gym come from, like, a similar background of myself. And so, it's like a lot of the people that come in the fight gyms come from, like, you know, kind of hard background. So, that's why I'm... Is I'm they trying. about that squabbling, yeah, though? Yeah, no, yeah. everybody, listen, I got... I tr- so so you know I put three people in the UFC, okay. Three people, three people in the UFC that we that we put in our gym. Yeah. I got guys now fighting right now, mixed martial arts, boxing and kickboxing. Everybody in my gym are dogs. Yeah, everybody. You know it's documented. You can look that up. Like I've been one of the top trainers in the, around here for a long time. Um, here's the thing: some people that come in the gym, it's my job. You see some people, they say you might not, they might not look like they got it. But some of them have it. They just don't know that they oh, got yeah. it. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm. I come from. A, you got to bring it a out. Similar but different. I definitely know that part. Yeah. But I'm trying to see. Or cause it, are you seeing a lot of like yeah. people with bite and fighting and yeah. that's not cowering down when it get a little rough. No, I train these guys, man. Mm-hmm. These guys are everybody. Like I said, everybody in my gym that fight for me. I I I got about currently fighting for me like pro and amateur about about like 13 fighters. Yeah. There's not one of them. That's, you know, they 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 about it. They ready, but it, it's it's. Don't take it as I'm talking no shit, cause I don't want no smoke with nobody. <laughs> no, no. That's in no USA or training or no. No. Yeah, no. I'm just yeah. We I'm talking about spirit. No. You know, don't, don't take it as no, no, you, you're literal. Gonna, you're gonna get ones that come in the gym, and uh, I I tell my lady all the time that I'm real good at. As soon as somebody walk in the gym, I'm real good at like um, you know. I'm real good at like um, seeing who's um who's got it and who don't. It don't take me that long to figure out if you got it or if you don't got it. Right. You know yeah. I mean? I, you've used that word spirit uh, um, about three, four times now, and you also used God about three times, man. And it, that's very important when it comes yeah. down to the aspect of of really yeah. understanding uh, which way you're going with, right. with whatever you're doing, right? Right. You know what well, I mean? It's, 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 the, um, it's the center of my life, right? It's like the first thing in my life that I that I live by because I tried it the other way so many times and it confused me it gave me identity crisis it made me frustrated it made me hurt and I was lost so in order for me to be found I just realized I got to do it this way and I have to that's what he said um Trust in God with all your heart and lean not to understand yeah. so do you, do you have a lot of kids from stop six in your gym no no uh-uh Mm. Not really at all. It could be yeah. from anywhere. Yeah, right? that's what I'm saying. Like, so I don't. It's not a certain I'm not territory. Labeled, no, I'm not mm. labeled to a community. I'm, I'm, every community. I'm. I mean, I'm. You're trying to capture the world. Yeah, man. Everybody training my gym come from everywhere. Most of the kids in my gym, some of them are, are like suburban kids. Some kids from north side, south side. Some are Mexican kids. There's maybe a, I got like three kids in my gym from from Stop Six. You know, but. It's, it's everyone, you know, I'm trying to reach everyone. Every like, hood. Yeah. I, I like that as well. You know, um, when you look at the way that, you know, um, you said earlier that you basically, 
you know, you they c- think they come in to fight, but there's something else that's underlining that's right. way more important. Right. And, and mm-hmm. that's the whole game even with what we're doing right. here. Exactly. The, the thing is to bring people in so that we can try to find a way to channel things into a positive right. aspect. That, that, uh, you know, a way mm-hmm. to where you make a way out of no way. Right. Touch some places that will never be touched and, except you get them in a certain group setting right. in order to do so. You so, know what so, I mean? So if they come in my gym, right, and my mind is everybody is not going to be a world champion fighter. Yeah. But my goal is to make everybody a world champion in life. That's it. Simple. So some guys that I've trained years ago um, don't fight no more, but it became very great men in their life because of the 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 me teaching and talking to them about God, about life, and never giving up on that spirit. Because if I can see that there can be something that I can save – I know that it's going to take time, and I'm patient with that, just as God was patient with me and my family was patient with me when I was trying to find myself in that world, being lost and things like that. So if they don't become a world champion, I'm okay with that. If they become a world champion in the process of me teaching them, that's fine. But if they if, if they become a spiritual world champion, then I know that I've done my job and I know that I've done what God has, has wanted me to do. Yeah. So my gym would not be open right now. I know that. My gym would not be open right now if I was self-gloating myself, if I was about me. I know that gym wouldn't be open. See, the gym is the foundation. That's all it is. It's the foundation and it's the it's the structure for God using my gym to do everything else that I'm doing in his life, like working with the kids, speaking, public speaking, and all these things. The the mark see, twenty-five years ago, if you would have told me that I was gonna be coaching mixed martial arts, I would have laughed at you. I would have been like, there's no way. I thought my path was going to be something else. Probably not even being here right now talking to you. That's the same so as me. That's, you know, my mother was always worried about me in that world because I was a loose cannon, bad temper, um, fearless, didn't care, trying to prove myself. But to physical. Go. You yeah. was physical in yeah. the six. And so, but, you know, um, yeah, and that's just, how, that's just how it go. Right. So at the end of the day, um, if I didn't, if 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 I didn't get a hold of that in my mind and my spirit, man, I, I I wouldn't be here. So that's why I'm trying to do the same thing for, for the kids, man. The, the hardest thing for me is walking in a room. Uh, we went and did some of the guys from all the neighborhoods went and speak to the kids in the middle school. Mm. When I go into schools and I look at the kids, the first thing I'm looking at is I'm trying to read the spirit, and I see a lot of them already broken. Yeah. At 13, 14 years old, broken mental. See, I can't say that I didn't come from love, right? I think that's why I got so much to give because I had people that did love me. And I think that's what saved me was the grace of love and prayer from my mom, my dad, and different people. So that's why when I go in and see these kids and I see the, the spirit already broken, I'm like, man, it breaks my heart. So what I'm trying to do is reach them before they're all the way gone. When they're 13, 14 years old, you know, you can still get them. I also realize that I'm not going to save every one of them. Oh, no. So, you know, I have to understand that that what I have is I have appoint, appointed assignments, and I just fulfill those assignments and keep doing it. So every day that I wake up, it's not about just me. It's about everyone that God puts in front of my path to help. And I have to do that with great intentions and purity in my heart. I can't do it for the cameras. I can't do it. For myself, I can't do it for show. It has to be something that's within you. And when it's within you, it'll flourish outside of you. Because the change has to come from the inside out and not the outside in. Yeah. You know Ministry is, is, is serious when it comes down to being your servitude of what your gift is. Right. You know, that's that's important, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You gotta have it. You know, <laughs> uh, if you don't, you don't even feel filled. If you right. don't if you don't do what your heart desires, yeah. if you're trying to help people. Right. You know, that's the whole game with me. I ain't I when I do this, I do this from the heart, man. Right. And and I ain't gonna do it. That's why when you called me that day, it was a no brainer to hey yeah. man, bring your own boss talk one on one because mm-hmm. of your spirit. Yeah. Because of what when we when we locked in, it was just just like when me and you talk. It's just something about certain people click, you know. Right. And for for you to be doing something for the kids, that's another thing. When you, I think teaching self defense and, and stuff like that, that's that's like really something that needs to be going on, yes. like for real. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a lot of people that just um, for lack of wanting to engage in something physical. 
I feel like that's why the murder rate is what it is. Yes, People right. don't want to fight. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes it's, it's a I fight with thing. That. It ain't for the killing, you know. It's, right. We supposed to get this on. They want to they wanna slide over somebody that stepped on your feet. Somebody <laughs> trying, to, trying to punk you a little right. bit. You don't right. even want to, man, throw some punches. He, you might lose the fight. He might never mess with you again, right. you know. Mm -hmm. But that's why I feel like it's good. But I, that's my major question to you was just, are you seeing... Because it's one thing to have a bad attitude and feel like you tough, but it's another thing to get hit and keep fighting. I just kind of, I don't know. I just, I, I, my, I just feel like people ain't really about it no more. Yeah. Like they, they getting hit. They don't want no more smoke no more. Right, you right, know what I'm saying? Right, ready to go okay. grab a gun right then. Right. You done got hit in the mouth. Your lip busted. Yeah, I'm, living a I'm finna go. I'm gone. I'm finna yeah. go. You taking out running? Finna get the strap. You know? It's Come on, ego. man. You don't even squabble. It's Stay docile. Down. Everybody docile now. Is what yeah. you saying? Everybody just, laid back. They ain't doing nothing no more. I feel like they fight. People. They'll shoot before Hose. they fight. Hose. Yeah. Yeah. They shoot the before word. they fight. Is what you saying? Yeah. It's a pride. It's a pride. It's a pride and ego thing with these dudes. Just think about that. Uh, nobody wants to be humiliated in front of other people. Nobody wants to take L's in front of people. So, yeah. like society like you got, said, a big, got a big, got a big role to do on that right L. there. D. Not D. taking a lot. Of yeah, why? Why is it like that? Why do you think it's like that? You know, I'm the social one. Social media, ask. the, yeah, the normal answer. Social media, but I feel like that it's a lack of self confidence because everybody gonna lose a fight. Right. So taking a loss, and then another thing is people that's winning fights, they not knowing how to win the fight. They so happy you done got some. I've seen people that really should have left somebody alone, and then they go all overboard on. The, you know what I'm saying? You, you punt. Now you making him have well, to you, do something. You, you make me think about that that case the other day in the school where the kids was fighting, and when the kids was fighting, uh, uh, one of them shot the other. Um, what stems this type of uh, activity okay, within so, the school? Right? So with that, with you that, know what I mean? just a question. School, with, yeah, with uh, that, with that particular situation. It goes back to what he was saying. That particular situation, that kid was being bullied, picked on, messed with, robbed, jumped, talking about they was on, they was messing with this kid. So forever. is there is there is there is there things that show that that was really going on, or yeah, is this what I believe I saw that it's people campaigning it that way. Which, which one is no, it? I, 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 they let that boy right on out. Yeah, I know that they let no, him. I'm right just trying on to out. understand because you know everybody can paint a certain picture. No, but they no, let him right I on. I get out. it, yeah. but I'm saying okay. So you are saying there was some and, evidence? And then, yeah. yeah, and then there's a video with the kid beating up on the kid, and he says. I mean, the kid did not want to fight. He was, if you look at the video, he was like on blood, the little kid, and this, he talking about on blood, and he from, uh, this is over <laughs> in Mansfield, talking about on blood or something, whatever. But he <laughs> hit the kid on blood, and beat, and the kid sat there and, fro and folded up. The day, the day before that, they had uh, beat him up, they had jumped on him. His mom had went to talk to the school. Mm -hmm. No one did nothing. They tried to get to the police. Nobody did nothing. So, uh, the next day he he shot him. Wow, he shot him. So I'm not saying that he's right. It's one of them is what it is. It, I'm, I'm not saying that he's right, but it is what it is. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we got to look at both sides of that. See, again, like like in a situation like that, I I I was always taught if they don't want it, leave. Them, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So chasing something down and yeah. lose your life. You know what I'm saying? It was I'm supposed to be. I was supposed to be getting to get with that kid. I'm, I'm still, I'm, me and Ch uh, Charleston is trying to work that out and talk with him about, you know, uh, talk with him about, um, you know, self-defense and stuff like that. I believe Charleston talked to the, the mother. Yeah, he was there that day when, and, they, when they let him out. Yeah, I do know that. And she, she was, um, I think he spoke, he spoke to her about me and, and um, wanted me to uh, get with the kid about, um, well, the, the thing I say Just is, man, somebody, no, nah, that's supreme. I, I had mm -hmm. to, I have to say somebody has to do something. Yeah. Instead of sitting back and everybody just chilling, somebody got to do something yeah. when it come down to these, these situations. Uh, there has to be somebody that's stepping up, that's really trying to make change. It, it's so many times we talk about the situation and we don't engage in the situation. That's good for social media. That'll right. get you some likes and views. You see what I'm saying? Right. But when do we take those opportunities like you're talking about to get in there and really show forth an effort to try to inject change right. in our youth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How do we do that? You know that's my favorite thing to say. How do we change the narrative? How, how do we stop this from happening? How do we get our kids stronger? You asking me? Yeah, I'm asking both of y'all. Y'all the, the, yeah. the harsh reality is that you have to, when it comes to dealing with kids, 
because they have so much access to information, yes. um, you have to really be an example of success to these children in order for them to like listen to what you got to say. Right. So you say you got to be plain. successful in order for them yes. to listen? Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying that. I'm saying that serious? if you, I'm yes, sir, and I'm serious. But then at the end of the day, if you don't, what, what if you're not success? looking like what is success? I'm saying you need to be looking like you handling your business. That's right. You need to you need to have some things that I desire. Right. You know, right. and you got to be seeming like you got an understanding of how to, to get yes. to something. Amen. In order for somebody to want to listen to what you got to right. say, that's right. It, all all of that, you know, the bomb can tell you something good too. I know that you can learn a lot from anybody, but. That's the not the kids. Other day, not nah, doing the kids. Well. They looking at their phone. Right. It's people that's again. It's is we just living in a different, different world. Different, right. but different I do think that self defense, like that, is a real key thing to finding that inner strength to fight through things, to persevere, to have some endurance, right. and go through tough things. I feel like it's a lot of people that's just. I just feel like everybody missing yeah. hoes out here. I like what you. <laughs> you know, I like I what, know what I feel you, but I, I like it what you're saying because no matter what, when you really think about it, the time you're spending with these people is a time that you share in different conversations, different right. times, father figure times. Right. Mm -hmm. This is really injecting change. Right. So I, I mean, because you got these kids with you, mm -hmm. how, how much time you spending with them? Say per week. Uh, I mean, I'm at the gym uh, five days a week. You know what I mean? I'm at the gym five days a week. And so how, how long do a do a do a client a couple, come in? A couple of hours a couple, couple of hours that's, a day. That's good time, but, man. But it's, every time though, I'm always planting that seed. And planting exactly. That thing, you know, and I agree with what he said about they got to be able to see that you kind of like got your stuff together. Because I was talking to one of the partners, said, "Well, you can't really help these kids if you're still in the neighborhoods and still doing these kind of things. They're not gonna really be able to listen to you because you still." One foot in, one foot out. You can't, you can't reach them like that. You just can't, you know. So, like my man said, you you have to like look like you know what you're doing, or you're successful, or got your stuff together for them to catch. Like you said, it got to be something that they desire to 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 to, to reach them. And it's serious, but you got to go, you got to get to them, and you got to not give up. There's a lot of them that I help. Yeah, but there's a genuine relationship. I keep, I hear what y'all saying. But I have to be the devil's advocate because I keep thinking about you. You in the gym. You ain't. It ain't really what. It's the time you spending with. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Ain't, you ain't shining and blinging no, and all that. No, it's no, an no, injected no. time no. that he's there with those kids. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. That has nothing to do with everything else. Right. And it's just raw. Right. You right. see what I'm saying? But if you dealing with that kid that don't do that, like you're talking about, and he's steadily looking at his phone and coming up with these scenarios with yeah. the music, yeah. then mm -hmm. that's that kid too, One though, of the biggest right? killers. Am I right? Yeah. Phys I just, physicality is just a, is something that needs to be really pressed. Some A lot of kids don't, don't necessarily play football no more, you know. Physicality that needs to be more outlets for that, especially for kids that's from, you know, rough places. Right. You know, physicality is a big deal, man. You gotta be able to be tough, go out there, get punched, Fight, you know, right. lose half class, no big deal. You know, you got to have all of that type of stuff in you. Right. You know, um, I think it's, you know, coming from a rough place and being involved with a like an area gym, like having a gym that's where you can go to, and they and they doing stuff like that. Yeah. Man, them some you know quality character individuals that you know yeah. that's gonna come out of so, it. So check this out. I, I had three kids that came to my gym uh, a little over a year ago. Their mom's out out of out of the east side and stopped seeing some. Dad was a pastor. These three kids, good kids, but rough around the edges. They came in my gym. This is how this happened. They walked in my gym. They were brothers. Okay, they walked in the gym, seen everybody sparring. I seen it in their eyes that they had it, would it take, but the arrogance and the and the ignorance of not knowing the fight world and fight game had them thinking something different. Uh -huh. So this is what I do. They come in the gym. I'm looking at them. Hey, I get to them right in their face. What's up? What you, what you got? What's going on? The attitude's different. Hey, we want, we, we come over here to spar. I says, have you had any training? Nah, we, you know, street fight dudes, we come in to spar. So this is what I do. You want to spar? Well, let's get to it. I want to know who you are right now. You coming to my gym with this spirit, I'm going to see you spar. So I, I put them in the lion's den. I threw them to the wolves, to some of my best guys. 
Sign the waiver, y'all go spar. They went in there and went hard, tried to fight hard, tried to go hard. I mean, they wasn't scared, wasn't backing down, but they got they got their ass whooped. Yeah. yeah. And they got their ass whooped a lot. But let me tell you about these three kids now. They're three of the best kids in my gym. Oh, they kept coming back. Listen, now the one, the one, the main one, and just had his first MMA fight the other day and he won by submission. They been in the gym and it changed their spirit. So they got the Rouse game and everything. It changed, it changed their attitude. The point is, they it changed the attitude because the atmosphere that was set in place for them was a good atmosphere. The people that was around them were good people. The people that was around them were mentors and leaders and there were people that understood them. So understanding that, they felt comfortable, got the love, and they, they got humbled. They realized they like can't. That. They got. They realized they can't whoop everybody. Then when they start realizing the skill set and realizing the cardio, the skill set, the respect, and the honor that has been taught from through martial arts, then it changed their spirit and it changed their attitude. Now some of the three best kids in my gym. That's a dope with the story. Best attitude. I remember when I first found out I couldn't whoop everybody. <laughs> you no, know, it's it's a humbling. It's experience. a humbling experience, huh? Yeah. yeah. Darren Leo, man. Um, Man, if there's anything, if there's any kid that's going without, if there's any situation, like I tell everybody to come on this panel, if you're dealing with something like that, hit me up, man. Yeah. Like I said, we got more than enough to try to help kids and right. help the situation. If it's really serious situations out there where kids are going without, yeah. then we're here to help. That's what this store been about the yeah. whole time I've been here, actually. So speaking of that, you I want to tell y'all that I just got um, Leonard Middle School, Fort Worth, and, uh, you know, Morningside. They have asked to bring. They asked for me to come in and teach my curriculum. So I have a life empowerment workshop program that I teach, and I did it for the Metro School, which is the alternative school up in Fort Worth, which is right by my gym. And then also now Leonard, I just talked to the principal. We met both principals from Leonard Middle School, and also uh, Morningside. Met with them, and I'm going to be teaching my life empowerment program um, in their in, in their school before they go to so be from eight to nine where we teach them. So this program that I have is a program that teaches them life skills. So a lot of the things that school don't cover, which I believe is on purpose, you know, um, the schools teach the school systems don't teach people to be leaders and entrepreneurs. They teach people to be, to be followers and, and brainwash them with the stuff. A lot of stuff that you learn in these public school systems are things that these kids aren't gonna use anyway. Definitely. So my my program is the opposite. We're teaching things like, you know, um, you know how to have good credit. Um, open a bank account. Open a bank account. Different things stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. Teach them STD, all that stuff that and nobody, you the know. The doors are not being open on then, that in the public And then school. not only telling them that, but telling them the repercussions of the what happens if you don't get this life together. These are the bad things that happen if you don't do this, but watch this. These are the great things you can have, and these are the great things that can happen if you follow this life and this program. So I'm confident with this because I go in there knowing, when I was younger, I was like, I wanna save all of them, but God, he's appointed time and appointed assignments, that's it. Yeah. So go in there, a lot of the kids that I helped through these programs to school, they all, most of them end up turning turning out good. So that's that's what the program, is that's all the about. Cu cu curriculum that I'm doing is, is for that. Could you tell everybody how they could get a hold of you? Yeah, um, you can get a hold of me on my uh, Instagram at Derwin Lamb, D-U-R-W-Y-N-L-A-M-B. Uh, my business page is Lamb4, um, uh, business page is Lamb4. And then um, my gym's in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, 3001 Shamrock Avenue, uh, Fort Worth uh, 76107 you can catch me on Facebook at Derwin Lamb and my YouTube channel at Fighting His Life with Coach D top three fighters of all time dead or alive top uh, three fighters uh, in, in life boxing. you gotta say I don't I'll, I don't care I, I ain't gotta say nothing Al D Al D said you gotta say <laughs> you got this man here is trained Listen, in, in I four said top five three different. fighters of all time so <laughs> right, <laughs> my baby go know. She know that's how we do it. Well, um, top three, particularly number one. He's not respecting uh, the, yeah, the. Yeah, you know, you heard he what I said. Number one. Um, <laughs> and man, I didn't say he's not it's, respecting it's too, the fight, it's Too many of them, man. You got to give me your top uh, three. I, I, Sugar Ray Leonard. Oh, okay, that's your number one. That's one of my number ones. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm <laughs> number two. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll take. I'll take a couple from each sport. Okay, so I go there you go. Sugar Ray Leonard uh, and UFC, uh, or UFC. I'm gonna go with uh, 
Shoot, man. <laughs> George St. Pierre. I, that's what I was okay. thinking. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with him because, you know, you know. But yeah. then, or, or Anderson Silva. No, no, or, George. No, you yeah. just get one. Yeah. Yeah. Or Usman. And the, or Usman right <laughs> now. See what I'm saying? Or get, Khabib, you, you know? see what I got to deal so, with? I said, yeah, I'm going to put so, you back on the panel. You know, we got to control I, this. So Here. you told me, I say, I said Sugar Ray Leonard. I say, um, um, I said George St. Pierre. Okay. And then. Um, Number three. That's, I need one more. Yeah. Okay. Dang. So I'm just going to say my particular guy. Hey. Uh, Roy Jones Jr. Hey, Roy Jones, huh? <laughs> I don't think nobody I probably yeah. run. So, uh, yeah, that, you know, but. That's since dope. I like, since, I like the top three. Since, since you only gave dope. me three. That's yeah, all I need yeah. because we'll be here all day. Yeah, Y'all, yeah, nah, y'all can real. go down through there. Yeah, y'all yeah. not going to do but me I like, like that. you was going with it. Like, <laughs> y'all going to sit here and just really go into yeah, it, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. We're going to just get three and leave it alone. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I just definitely um, I, I definitely appreciate what you're doing, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's to be noticed, right, Al yeah, For sure. Yeah. Come Working with them kids and all of that, that's a good thing, man. Makes me feel good. It, it right. Definitely, it's Help, a feeling. Right? It's a any, feeling. Helping anybody, it just makes me feel good. It helps yeah. me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's a good feeling because those days I have my moments. And, and one thing I can say when you get a kid that maybe win a, a championship or something that you want to recognize him for, just call me and uh, bring that kid through here. Yeah. And let's, let's, let's really recognize yeah. them for what, they, so, what they're accomplishing. So let me share this with you real quick. My top fighter, one of my top fighters, I met him in one of the alternative schools. Really? When I was doing a motivational speaking panel to the whole school, he came up to me after we got through, walked straight up to me and said, hey, man, I want to be a fighter one day. I want to be, I want to be, I want to be a fighter. And I hear that all the time. If you imagine, if I had a dollar for everybody said that, I'd be rich. But, and I said, okay, come to the gym. And maybe like a few months later, I never heard from him. His aunt bring him to my gym. He's not left my gym since that day. Wow. He was 14 years old. He's 22 now. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the top flyweight prospects in the in the nation in, in, in MMA right now. What's yes, his name? You know, Kevin Fernandez. Kev, shout Kevin out Fernandez. Kevin Fernandez, yeah. man. You, you just got that serious shout out on yeah. Boss Talk 101. Yeah. Kevin That's your Fernandez. boy, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin Fernandez. Say, man, thank you so much, man, for coming on the show, man. Yeah. We love you, brother. Yeah, love and you uh, if too. it's anything that you need from us on this end on Boss Talk 101, yeah. Ian, hey, man, give us a shout, man. Hey, straight and up. you got anything else for him, Al D? Mm -mm, man taking care of his business out there. Hey, oh, man. man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you.